I'm just going to show you how to do a few of the things that you can do with the, the Chrome uh, developer tools. Safari has some that are similar. I think Firefox does as well. So you can adapt this if you use another browser. But I'm going to show you in this because it's what I use and because I have the whole system working from start to finish in terms of um, taking images of the results that you're coming up with that you can then share with your client. So by way of example, I'll first show you a little bit about how this tool works. You right click on anything really, and you can then choose inspect element. You might have seen this, you might have accidentally clicked it before and and uh, and panicked and then closed the window. Um, but what this does is it lets you see a bunch of different things. This tool has a lot of different uses and we're just going to touch on a few of the front end ones real fast. Um, but what you can do is you can see your code. You'll notice as I'm, as I'm moving through the code it's highlighting different parts of the page which is really nice because then you can sort of see what, uh, what you're impacting when you change things. You can expand sections, contract them, this is not your actual source code in that it's a formatted uh, it's a, it's it's formatted here the way that it isn't necessarily depending on your coding style in your source code. This is just the way that Chrome puts it together to make it easy to expand and contract these tree elements essentially. So you can kind of see down th you know as you go through here you can see it's highlighting the different pieces. You can use this to get a really quick idea of the size of a very of a given element. So you can see here I've got the content here and you can just keep drilling down and down and down and down and down depending on your your theme code to see the different pieces here. You can see you know we've got a heading. So that's just kind of the quick overview of what what this looks like as you use it. Now the thing that's really cool about this is for any given element you can see when you look over here on the right you can see what styles are impacting it right now and where they're coming from. So have you ever had that situation where you're like why is it so small or why is that that font and you really don't know where it came from? This helps you find out. So you can scroll through it and you can see that it goes in, in order from of precedence. So the things at the top are the things that are actually impacting your page. And as you scroll down, you'll start to see various things being crossed out. The reason that's crossed out is because there's a setting that's got higher precedence that's overriding it. So you can see a lot here. You can also, if you scroll up to the top and you, you show the computed style, this doesn't show you all of the details, it just shows you the end result. So for instance, if you wanted to know what the, f the font family was, it's Open Sans. If you expand it, you'll see exactly where that's being declared. In this case, it's actually in the code of this page. Um, in other cases, it might be in a style sheet, which is referenced someplace like this right here. So it'll say layout.css and it'll give you the line number so you can find it. So that can be really, really helpful. But what we're going to talk about mostly today is how you can actually change things temporarily. So you wouldn't use this for actually updating the website, but it's a useful way to test things out, to see how it looks, and to give your client options if you want to show them a few different things and you want to just do it quickly and you want to have the results that are the way they will be in the live site. So as an example, let's show you what happens if we decide we want to make this font size bigger. So what you can do, and you can type, you can go to do this and you can select it and then you can type it in, or you can just use your arrow keys like I'm going to, to go up and down like that. And you can see how it's impacting that headline. So you could see, you know, do I like it right there? Maybe I like it right there. Maybe I want a little smaller, you know. So you can find the perfect size and you can do it live which is so much easier than making a change in your style sheet saving it uploading it refreshing you know i mean that's just that's a pain when you just want to see what does one point or pixels difference make in this case so you just you know you can do that it's pretty awesome this also applies to things like you could change your your colors of things so if we look at this element 
Keep in mind that when you have it selected here, when you've got you're hovering over it, it's gonna give it a highlighting, so it's gonna look a little weird. But if we do this, you can actually change the element on the style itself, which for our purposes is fine, or you can do it within the list of styles here. So for instance, what we could do is Ta-da! That's beautifully hideous. So you could do that just to see what it looks like. And again, what you can do is give your client options. Well, I'll show you how to do that right now. So what I'm using is I'm using this um, screen capture tool from Google. If you have a screen capture tool, you can use it. What I like about this is that it's very easy to capture the whole page if you're talking about something that's going to impact the whole page. So recently, as, uh, as an example, I was helping a client reduce the amount of, of vertical space between the elements on their page. But it can be really difficult to look at what's changed and then remember what it looked like before. So in that case, what I did is I took a, a screenshot of the whole page from top to bottom, which was, you know, maybe four or five screenfuls. And, and then I gave that to them as kind of a before image, and then I took another one after so that they could kind of see them side by side, flip back and forth between them, see the difference. So you can do that, and all you have to do, and this, it's really this easy, you just hit capture whole page, it captures it, it gives it to you here, it's an image, you hit save. You can also do things like highlighting, um, adding arrows and lines, you can do all kinds of neat things like that. Um, but I'm just doing the basics here at this point. And you just click save, and it will bring up your regular dialog to save it wherever you want to save it. It by default gives it the name that's the title of of the site and you're good to go. I'm not going to save at this point because I don't really need it, but that's it. So, and as another example, I'll show you how you can change out actual images or backgrounds. I just showed you a really basic background change, but what if you want to change something like this? So we'll inspect the element and sometimes you'll look through this and there's a few times, you know, when you've got elements that are overlapping you'll, the, the element you inspect isn't necessarily the one you want to edit. So you'll look through here, and in this case, I'm not seeing that background declaration that I would expect, so I'm going to look here, and there it is. So that's the background that's there right now. You can also uncheck, check, uncheck, so you can just disable something that quickly. So if I wanted to do a different one, all I do is click here, which gives me a new line. I can copy in this code, and obviously I wouldn't really use this because it makes these sort of unreadable, but of course that's easy to change. We can just go, let's see, where do we think this color is set? Oh, look, right there. Okay, so what we could do is change this, and this tool even has a handy little color picker, and just like that we have ourselves White text. Okay, I didn't save it though. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let me do that again. And by save it, I don't mean like hit control S. I just mean go back here and leave it there. Perfect. So that's an easy way, and then I would obviously, if I was really doing this, I would change the, the hover states too. But you can see it there. Now one other thing that you can do is you can change the actual content of the page. Now why would you want to do that? Well, if you want to show what different headlines might look like, um, if you want to... Oh, I had, a, I had a circumstance where I needed to create some text that looked like text but was really an image and there was all this complicated reason as to why that was, but we needed a fixed width image rather than the text, so what I actually did is I just edited the text in here and took a screenshot and and used that. That's probably kind of a hacky workaround for a lot of things, but it was a temporary solution for what we needed to do. So what you do is you go here, you can either double click on this or you can say edit as HTML. And I don't believe it changes until you're out of it. So there, just like that, different code different content. So it's really that easy. So I highly encourage you to play around with this tool, start changing some stuff, mess with the CSS a little bit, and figure out ways to quickly mock up or test changes, and then 
here's the caveat. You have to remember what you changed so that you can put it in your actual CSS. So if you change the color of stuff, you've got to remember it because watch what happens if I reload this page. My changes are gone because they were never really changed. They were just showing the display differently. So keep that in mind. Make notes of what you're changing. Anything you want to keep, you'd better copy over to your actual style sheet before you go any further. Hope that was helpful.